There's an object and a price, but it's not just financial. What are you really paying for when you buy an object? One of the main issues around sustainability is the lack of awareness about the simple changes that individuals can make in their lives to achieve a more sustainable future. There are questions that we need to ask ourselves about our everyday practices. Do I need to buy a new plastic bottle every time I need a drink of water? Are the cheap electronic goods I'm buying shortchanging someone else? Do I need another pair of shoes when others don't have any? What are some of the educational and cultural issues that contribute to a lack of sustainability? Let's ask our consumer. The conscious consumer, the enlightened customer, the mindful shopper, ever vigilant, our consumer has been reading an article about his ecological footprint. Yes, it turns out there's a story behind each of the products he buys. A story of people, a story of the world in which we live. Sometimes our product has travelled through so many hands that it's near impossible to uncover the true story. This is an investigation into the educational and cultural issues surrounding one of our most treasured modern day activities, consumption. It's through consumption that we exercise the most substantial portion of our global footprint. And that's interesting because the story of our products extends far beyond the shelves of our supermarket and beyond the trash at our curbside. It's in this part of the story that our footprint is made. A good place to start is with our very own footprint. Have you ever wondered where your shoes come from? And how they can possibly find themselves on the shelf for only $25? For a start, one might imagine, the shoes had to be designed, the material sourced, stitched together, shipped and distributed, and sold. All this might come to something rather exorbitant. So, who is paying for these shoes? Usually the answer is, somebody isn't being paid for their work. The real cost of these shoes is much greater than $25. But, to keep this price down, other costs have been externalised, like the cost of cleaning up pollution, and the cost of a living wage for the factory worker who made them. And that's not just limited to shoes. Now there's an ecological footprint. With the purchase of one pair of shoes, our consumer was harming the delicate social and natural ecology of his planet without even knowing it. Why wasn't he told? To understand this, we need to examine the educational and cultural barriers to ethical purchasing. Yes, we live in a world saturated with advertisements telling us to shop. Enormous sums of money are spent on marketing products misleading us creating brands that feel like our families and friends, and telling us about the happiness that their product will bring. But shopping doesn't really bring us all the fulfilment we're promised by marketing. In fact, no sooner are we home from the shops with our purchase than the next model is out, even better than yours. So we continue to listen to advertisements, and shop, and consume, and discard. Now what kind of a culture does that create? We haven't always consumed so much stuff. After all, you can only wear one pair of shoes at a time. But in the struggle for profits, companies have found ways of cutting production costs and increasing demand far beyond basic need. Welcome to fashion. If the marketing of a product is successful enough, it becomes an item of fashion, a signifier of identity. Our personal and cultural identities interact through fashion and all of a sudden, wants are turned into needs. Now, even if your bright, shiny shoe is in perfectly good condition, you'll need to replace it every season, every month, or every time you go shopping. Shoes used to last for years, but not these days. Of course, somebody has to make them. This means that production goes up, prices go down, quality goes down, and the factory workers work harder for less pay. But were his shoes the whole story? Was there an alternative? Of course there is. 
Clothing companies such as Gorman feel that ethical business is important in a world of fast fashion, driven by waves of new products and big marketing. Gorman environmental consultant Tosh Sato states that the biggest physical barrier to ethical shopping is the tyranny of distance. From cotton farm to retail outlet, there are lots of stages in a product's life cycle that need to be managed, right down to whether a customer cycles to a store or chooses to drive. As the retailer, it can be difficult to control all those stages. The information is out there, but again, it's the complexity of a product's life cycle that is the barrier. Everyone involved needs to be aware of the social and environmental issues, but also have the commitment to act on their knowledge, which is probably the hardest thing to do. Keep that in mind next time you go shopping. Ask questions. Where does your product come from? Fashion doesn't just apply to clothing. It's spread out into all sorts of industries where newer is always better. You might think that your hip little MP3 player is the first gadget to make its debut on the fashion scene. But all sorts of electronics are now seasonally exchanged. Have you ever wondered how your computer, DVD player and mobile phone are getting more intelligent yet less expensive every year? Electronics are one of the many goods still made under sweatshop conditions in order to fuel the demand for fashionable disposable gadgets. During the 1980s and 90s, millions of Chinese people migrated from rural villages to go and work in giant factories to produce our cheap goods. Many workers work 10 to 15 hour days in six day weeks and don't make living wages. They live in crowded dormitories and endure harsh, unsafe working conditions. The standard wage in many Chinese factories is around 30 to 45 cents an hour, whereas a living wage is three times that. Factories often have very few, if any, environmental measures in place, which is a worry because electronics are manufactured using highly toxic chemicals. Okay, okay, it's not all doom and gloom. Consumer pressure and growing corporate responsibility is changing the way electronics are made. Many organisations have been set up to investigate and monitor working conditions and advocate for labour rights in third world factories. Find out where your electrical goods come from and buy from companies certified by the Fair Workplace Council, International Labour Organisation or Good Electronics. You can also take your old electronics to accredited recyclers.